<laughs> what kind of a sociopath would use that terminology <laughs> while people are still literally cleaning up from storms? <laughs> I'm sorry. Three legs of the triad, though. Do you have a priority? Because I want to go to Senator Rubio well, I, I after think, that. I think him. to me, Luke, nuclear is just the, the power, the devastation is very important to me. Now that is terrifying. This is what the president said at a White House photo op surrounded by military leaders and their spouses. You guys know what this represents? Well, I don't know, maybe it's the comedy for the storm. What's the storm? It could be the um, comedy for the K-12 schools that receive government funding should meet the same accountability standards, equal accountability in any K-12 school or educational program that receives federal funding, whether public, public charter, or private. I support accountability. Equal accountability for all schools that receive federal funding. I support accountability. Okay, is that a yes or a no? That's a, I support accountability. Do you not want to answer my question? And it means the very identity of our nation depends on the passing of civic ideals to the next generation. We need a renewed emphasis on civic learning in schools, and our young people need positive role models. Bullying and prejudice in our public life sets a national tone, provides permission for cruelty and bigotry, and compromises the moral education of children. The only way to pass along civic values is to first live up to them. Finally, the call to action calls on major institutions of our democracy, public and private, to consciously and urgently attend to the problem of declining trust. For example, our democracy needs a media that is transparent, accurate, and fair. Our democracy needs religious institutions that demonstrate integrity and champion civil discourse. Our democracy needs institutions of higher learning that are examples of truth, and free expression. In short, it is time for American is institutions to step up and provide cultural and moral leadership for this nation. Ten years ago, I attended a conference on democracy and security in Prague. The goal was to put human rights and human freedom at the center of our relationships with repressive governments. The Prague Charter, signed by champions of liberty, Václav Havel, Natan Sharansky, Josea Maria Aznar called for the isolation and ostracism of regimes that suppress peaceful opponents by threats or violence. Little did we know that, a decade later, a crisis of confidence would be developing within the core democracies, making the message of freedom more inhibited and wavering. Little did we know that the repressive governments would be undertaking a major effort to encourage division in Western societies and undermine the legitimacy of elections. Repressive rivals, along with skeptics here at home, misunderstand something important. It's the great advantage of free societies that we creatively adapt to challenges without the direction of some central authority. Self-correction is the secret strength of freedom. We are a nation with a history of resilience and a genius for renewal. Right now, one of our worst national problems is the deficit of confidence. But the cause of freedom justifies all our faith and effort. It still inspires men and women in the darkest corners of the world. It will inspire a rising generation. The American spirit does not say we shall manage or we shall make the best of it. It says we shall overcome. And that is exactly what we're going to do. Give humanity the rose. <laughs> Will civilization make it to the fantasy suite? And calm before the storm? Is that what you're saying? Calm before the storm? Positive. How the f calm before the storm? <laughs> How is all this not the storm? <laughs> this better idea. And it's about our diversity. And it's the power of the diversity, the power of the 4,000 of you and all of the people that are on the staff tower and lining the glass, the power of us as a diverse group. 
the power that we come from all walks of life, that we come from all parts of this country, that we come from all races, we come from all backgrounds, gender, all makeup, all upbringing, the power of that diversity comes together and makes us that much more powerful. That's a much better idea than small thinking and horrible ideas. We have an opportunity here, 5,500 people in this room, to think about what we are as an institution. This is our institution and no one can take away our values. No one can write on a board and question our values. No one can take that away from us. So just in case you're unclear on where I stand on this topic, I wanna to leave you with my most important thought today. If you can't treat someone with dignity and respect, then you need to get out. <laughs>